Well, hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, my name is Johnny and you are watching Hillbilly Modeling. And this is going to be uh, part one, uh, I guess, <laughs> of our Right Sight Clone Radial Engine uh, C9HE uh, by Atlantis in 112 uh, scale. <laughs> and this is a this is a STEM kit. Uh, Atlantis thinks that this helps young people uh, develop these type of skills, STEM skills, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. So I guess we're going to see um, <laughs> how much science, technology, engineering, and math we're going to need to put this thing together. <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump down to the bench and get started with this kit. So this kit's not going to be about cutting off and cleaning up parts because you got plenty of that to do, but I did make the, uh, the assertion that it sounded like the, the plastic is... Uh, uh, brittle and as you can see I was definitely wrong with that so the the noise rattling around in the box is definitely uh, not not coming from the parts well I mean it's coming from the parts but it's not because it's brittle it's probably because of the thicknesses so uh, the other thing I want to point out uh, as far as cleanup goes uh, you do have your normal uh, seams to clean up and everything but as you can see Atlantis has chosen to push these parts out of the mold so these are the little ejector pin marks that are right on the edge of the assembly now as far as the look of the model when you're putting it together it doesn't affect anything uh, but you can't have just a little bit of flash there uh, so the thing to do is to make sure that you don't have anything that keeps your parts from actually seating together and as you can see here, I've already sanded this, so we're just flat sand these, uh, which will really help with the assembly and the adhesion of the glue and everything. And it's really easy done, and you just need to take a few passes on it just to make sure that there's nothing uh, that's going to hold those parts up from uh, actually mating together. Uh, and it's not a bad idea to flat sand uh, all the parts that you can uh, just by putting your sanding stick there flat on the mat. That way you don't get any rounded edges. So we are going to take a quick look at the instructions here. As you can see, step one, we have, uh, that's the optional uh, cylinder with the cutaway. And then for step two, that's all the rest of the cylinders. Or you can just choose to not do the cutaway. And then we got our crankcase with our push rods uh, in step three to put on. Um, those mounting flanges too for our cylinders and so what I'm doing is I'm just going to go through the instructions and we're looking at the things that we can put together that'll make painting easier I hope uh, so we can do the front case we can do the propeller we can put that together um, and then of course the uh, oil pump and sump assembly we can probably put that together it looks like uh, and our piston, and so on and so forth, just picking out these major assemblies here, uh, the turbocharger housing, and the back plate for accessory drive, yeah, stuff like that, that we can go, because we, we, we do have cleanup and stuff to do on a lot of these, well, okay, on all these parts, more or less, uh, but we'll see how all that goes as we progress through the build. So we want to get these sub-assemblies together uh, so that we can actually paint this. So we're going to start off with our cylinders, of course. That looks like a good place to start, and we'll assemble those. Uh, I've already cut them off. There's not any real flash uh, on uh, the cylinders themselves, so it's just regular seam uh, kind of uh, cleanup that we'll have to do. Uh, I did notice, though, right there on these little valve covers that they don't really match up perfectly. Now, this is the cutaway one that I've already put together with that red insert there. So, I uh, just got the rest of the cylinders to put together. Now, this is the crankcase. It's two pieces to put together. And then all you got to do is uh, put these mounting flanges on for the, uh, for the cylinders. And they are offset keyed, so you can't really get them backwards. It would be terribly obvious if you got it around backwards so uh, I did put the one uh, with the slot in it for our piston in place first so I didn't accidentally glue it somewhere or, or cement it somewhere where it doesn't belong and this is our crankcase uh, built up no real problems here 
and it looks good so we'll move on now this is our front cover assembly uh, we do have a, a cap to go on top uh, and it fits as you would expect one too and then of course we do have a uh, another cap here um, to put into place now there is no positive locating pin or anything like that you just kind of glue it down to the flat spot there and and uh, and you're good to go now this is our oil pump assembly um, and part of the reservoir and you can see how these parts go together they are offset and that seems to be a going theme here in this kit that's very 19 1970s well actually late 1960s and 1970s kind of uh, molding errors that you find in those old kits which is a real shame because this is a uh, uh, this is a 2021 kit here also uh, on our turbocharger housing or supercharger housing supercharger housing you can see uh, right at the seam where the halves go together our back plate kind of wobbles on that so we're gonna have to take and uh, take a file and uh, file that down nice and flat so that seats properly next problem we got uh, and I hate to be pointing out nothing but problems but <laughs> it's kind of what we got uh, yeah this is the carburetor which goes on to the supercharger housing and as you can see those mating surfaces aren't anywhere near being flat uh, yeah this is old stuff this is old school kind of modeling uh, and, and I guess if you want to do a retro kit, you would expect something like this, but we're going to have to take care of that. So this, this area is so large, uh, I just went out to the garage and got a large file. Yeah, I know, <laughs> you know you're in trouble when you got to go to the garage to get tools, but, uh, here we are, and this definitely will do the job and we've got it nice and flat there for the mounting base of the carburetor so back onto our uh, uh, supercharger housing it still has a little bit of wobble and there's no way to straighten that out except to remove the locator pin and it's not that big a deal because we can just line it up using the edges uh, of the carburetor and then of course the uh, the mounting area there for the uh, um, carburetor that's on the supercharger housing all these technical terms <laughs> and uh, once I get them flat they uh, now will slide around a little bit but we've gotten rid of the wobble so that means that we'll be able to glue this and those parts are going to mate up and they're going to look like they're supposed to be there no big gaps or anything so I've also taken care of uh, filing down uh, that housing there and that fits fine so we'll be able to just move on with the rest of the build. So we do need to use a little bit of perfect plastic putty here that's that water-based uh, uh, filler and the part we're working on the instructions that's part number 52 uh, the instructions call it a tachometer ha or tachometer <laughs> halves uh, but in um, in reality uh, I think it's a governor so I don't know about the accuracy of their labeling but anyway we will just take and fill those horrible sink marks and everything up uh, and just sand those off nice and smooth because this will be visible uh, on, on the uh, on the back of the engine okay let's take a look at these instructions there there is an issue a big issue I think with this kit uh, first thing I've been building up these assemblies as you guys know as you can see uh, and, and this this piece right here it involves this piece right here and then our cylinders so oh and it's going to involve this one right here our oil sump assembly so uh, let's take a look at what's going on. So, uh, we did this. We put our caps on here. Uh, we hadn't fooled with that. Uh, I just checked the fit there. Put the crankshaft together. Where's our crankshaft? There it is. Put our crankshaft together. Okay. Skip the propeller. Don't need it right now. And then you have to insert 
uh, the piston and connecting rod and snap it onto the crankshaft. Okay, and then you have to put, as you can see here, your, uh, uh, your cylinder on. Okay, for, and that's for the exposed piston. And then they talk about putting the cylinders in place. Well, where's me a pointer at? Here, here we go. So you can see we got our cylinders here, but if you look back behind these cylinders in this schematic, uh, those are the those are the intake pipes. Okay, those are coming off the intake manifold housing, which is on the back of the engine. And then you can see we got our push rods in front. All right, that's just a, and we're going to go ahead and set this together so you can see what's going on. Then you got your your oil pump and sump halves. You'll put those together. You'll put them on the tank, and then you'll put that into place. And then, remember these pipes over here? Well, then you put the manifold on with the pipes. Okay? Seems simple enough, doesn't it? <laughs> well, watch what happens when we do that. So the way this thing goes together, let me from, find my front here. Here, okay. This is the, the front of the engine. So we're supposed to put this together in step three with your push rods. So that goes on right there, like so. That's fine. Then this has to go on just like so. Now our crankshaft goes in here. And we got got our little lobe right there that our connecting rod is just going to snap onto. So the way this goes in, if I can get it lined up, oops. Yeah, sorry, just bear with me here. All right, so that goes into place just like that. And then we can stick our connecting rod in, and it is slightly offset in the inside the piston there because of the way the clearance is. Anyway, that's the only thing that that connection down there is the only thing that keeps the shaft from uh, sliding in and out. Okay, because if it comes off the piston, it'll just go down inside there. Now, is that a problem? Well, yeah, because once we put this assembly right here, which is our turbocharger and stuff on the back. Uh, you're done. Okay? There, there's, You'd have to fish that back out somehow. And then there's no way to get... I mean, you know. So that's, that's kind of an issue. So we'll take that out of the way right now. Which is a shame because we already built this up as a cutaway. And we may keep it that way. I don't know. We'll have to think about it. Alright, so let's take a look at what's next. So according to the instructions... Okay. Where am I at here? want to show you in step three see right there we're putting our push rods on and then we put this together and then we put uh, uh, they call them cylinder skirts you'll put those on okay that's three and then you just continue building up the center hub right and then when you get down here is where you put the piston in the, in the uh, uh, crankshaft, or onto the crankshaft. And then they're talking about putting our cylinder sleeves on. And so remember these pipes? Okay, so there we go. If you put these cylinders on, and it doesn't matter, uh, we will put this one on right here because that's where it goes. So you do have a connection point here for your push rods, okay? And you would think that if you put those on, if I line them up, there, there's a gap there, all right? So is that a problem? Well, not until you put all your cylinders on 
and then we're going to line this up with the pin in the back and find out that you've got that tremendous gap there to your intake pipes. I don't know about you guys, but I don't think that that's a good idea. And in order for that to line up, you, you got to do a lot of things. And if you have your cylinders leaning forward onto your uh, pushrod tubes, uh, yeah, that's, that's not going to work. You're going to have a huge gap there. That's just too big of a gap. Uh, it'd take a lot of filler. Actually, it would take a spacer. And then you can also get these things slightly left or right. And if your cylinders are, you're not going to line up at all because you've got those three little, let me get that out of there, three little bolts right there for the flange. See those three little bolts on the mounting flange? That pipe goes in the middle of them. So that's, that's problem number one. Problem number two. If we go down here, if we if we assemble this thing the way they want us to, and let's assume that the, the pipes are off the back. I'm just going to leave them on for now because you can squeeze your cylinders in there. Okay. We're going to put these bottom two on because this is where our oil pump is. Oh, yeah. I've got it backwards. <laughs> here we go. There we go. So we're snapped into place there. With this part assembled, which they tell us to do, before you put this on, there's no way to get it in. I, I mean, there's a way to get it in there, but there's no way, unless this is disassembled, put it in, you'd have to put it in in pieces. Uh, if, like in 10, where I showed you where they do show the pipes in place, um, but if you don't put the pipes in place first, then you can't get this lined up for your, for your cylinder head to your pipe. So you're going to have a big gap there, and it's going to be, that's not going to be, that's not, never a good thing. And if you put this manifold on first, then if you've already put this together, you've got an issue. Okay? So what we can do is we can put all the cylinders in, and the way I intend to do this, we won't have our push rods in place. We'll put our manifold on first, then we'll put all of our cylinders on because that will be our alignment. Okay, we're not going to worry about the push rods. And then, after we get them, uh, get them all on, we're going to leave this one off. Okay, this is the bottom of the engine. We'll leave this one cylinder off right there. We can leave him off, and we can put everybody else on. And then we can go ahead, and we'll have to take and do some modifications here because if these cylinders are up against the pipes, there are these large gaps. And I can shim that out. That's not the problem. That's not the issue. The issue is... Uh, it, first of all, it shouldn't be that way. You guys probably already know that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that that is a problem right there. Uh, but anyway, moving on. Now, we're going to leave that off for now. Um, once we get... Uh, I'll show you guys real quick. We'll just put a cylinder on either way. There we go. So, so these cylinders will be attached uh, to the intakes. We're going to leave this one off. Now you can leave this one off too if you wanted to or whatever. But with this one cylinder off, we can actually get... Uh, where am I at? There we go. We can get our cooler into place. Just like that. Then we can come back and put that one last cylinder in. It'll, it'll go. There we go. Because otherwise our oil pump and sump assembly is not going to fit because I've already glued it together per the instructions. But if we leave these intake pipes off until step 12, 
we're going to have an issue because all of our cylinders are going to be away from our intakes. So that's a problem. And maybe I'm being too picky, but you know what? Um, really, for, for a kit this new, that that is an issue. That's a problem. So we'll talk more about issues and problems. But what we can do is we can go in these huge gaps. Uh, let me see if I can hold this just right so you guys can see. Make sure we're seated there. There we go. So how big of a gap is that? Well, it's a pretty good size. See that? Now that's with our, let's see, let me push it down really good and make sure. Let me line that up really good and still yet. So that's not cool. That's just not cool. So for assembly purposes, uh, I think the best solution is we'll leave this one cylinder out and we can assemble the kit with that one cylinder off. And I think I'm just gonna change this. Uh, I really wanted to have the piston shown because it's a stem kit, right? So I wanted to have that shown, but really it just creates more problems. And if it ever pops off for whatever reason, then you lose your, I just lost it. <laughs> there we go. You lose your crankshaft. You know? And, uh, I mean, I guess maybe maybe they intended us to glue this together, and uh, it pro which is probably true. That way it wouldn't push in. But what if you want to display this as an engine that would be in a shop with uh, without the propeller on it, right? Well, then you don't have that option anymore. You just have to, you have to glue that together. Because otherwise, it's not going to stay uh, in our center hub section here. As you can see, that's the only way to do it. But they did put a spline detail, uh, detail on here, which makes me think that maybe they wanted you to have the option because that's kind of how it would look in the shop. I mean, you wouldn't have the propeller on it before you put it in the plane. So... Yeah, um, I'm not happy with this kit, <laughs> can you tell? All right, anyway, let's go ahead with the build and we'll see what we can do. So I've decided to go ahead and to delete the cutaway, <laughs> if I can cut away the cutaway. So <laughs> what I'm doing here is I just use a little bit of, uh, to me, extra thin there, put it on the seam. Uh, and that'll loosen up the the old Tamiya extra thin where it's kind of welded it together there and being very careful and keeping my fingers uh, out of danger's way there. You don't want to be in direct line with where you're prying um, or trying to slice. Uh, we'll just go ahead and try to remove this. If we, if we can get this removed, no problem, then uh, uh, there we go. We're just going to build this cylinder back up as uh, as a regular cylinder. I'm going to remove that uh, that cutaway top portion there too, and uh, we'll just put the uh, the spare front on it there. We're just, we're not going to have a cutaway, so yeah, uh, it comes apart um, using the same process, putting the extra thin on it, and it kind of softens it up a little bit. It may have just popped off without putting the extra thin on it, but uh, uh, there we are. So all we got to do is sand that down just a little bit, and we'll just go ahead and glue this up just like we did uh, the other eight cylinders. And you'll never know that this, this was ever uh, uh, a cutaway cylinder, and it's a shame that we're losing that option, but I want to be able to display this model with the propeller off. So that's... Uh, that's the reasoning for that. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to build this crankcase up from the back forward. We're going to put that intake uh, distribution manifold with the pipes, which is all molded into one piece there. We're going to put all that together. And I will clamp it down. 
uh, just to make sure that everything is fully seated because when we start putting our cylinders on, uh, we want them to all line up. So uh, <laughs> we, don't, we don't want them leaning forward and leaning back and all that good stuff. So those pipes will keep us, uh, keep us honest, keep us true. So since I'm getting rid of the piston, which kind of makes me mad, but you know, It'll be all right. I'm just going to glue the uh, the shaft into place. That way we don't have to worry about it uh, falling inside the engine. Uh, because maybe I want to display it with the uh, uh, with the propeller off, you know, which would make sense to me anyway. So now we can go ahead and put all of our cylinders on, except for that one cylinder. Uh, and if you need to mark it, I, I've marked two of them there together. Um, to uh, uh, make sure that I, I'm, when I when I get around to that spot, I double check and make sure that uh, the I, I'm leaving the right one out. <laughs> we don't want to glue glue the wrong cylinder in place, and then we can't get our oil pump and sump assembly in there. So I do use the uh, the heavy. Uh, Tamiya glue on the pipe itself, and then just extra thin on that mounting flange. And then we just go back around it. I make sure that everything's glued on really good. So if we, we go to pull this off, uh, it's going to take polystyrene with it. <laughs> so <laughs> we're, we're not going to have to worry about our cylinders falling off. So that's a good thing. Okay, so here we are with all of our cylinders on, and we're just going to sandwich this uh, pushrod plate into place here. Now, I've left those two uh, uh, cylinders out right at the sump and pump area. And here's our sump and, uh, or our sump, yeah, yeah, the, the reservoir. Uh, oil reservoir and sump with the, uh, with the pump attached. And... I believe the one cylinder that I got my hand on, I don't think it's, I just want to make sure that, that it's not going to be in the way. Uh, if it is installed, you know, I would, I really hate to get this far down the line and really make a terrible mistake and not be able to get it all together. So here we go. Uh, we can put those cylinders in uh, with the uh, uh, oil reservoir and sump and pump all in place there. And... Uh, but I think uh, the one on the left, we can, uh, which would be the right side of the engine, right lower. But uh, at, at any rate, uh, I believe the one I just took out, uh, we can leave out. And then that one, we will glue it into place. Yeah. So that looks good. We'll go ahead and, and put that eighth cylinder into place. Next up, we're going to work on these push rods, and this is why I never throw away these little bitty scraps that you would think is trash of polystyrene. We're going to need them. All right, so we're just shimming these out uh, here on our push rods because, because of those big spaces. And I'm using different uh, thicknesses of card to do that. And you can see I cut a little relief there on the corner because of the way the head is shaped on the bottom there and what we what we're doing is we're filling those spaces and that fits pretty good that's nice i have thinned this one out uh this is the first one that i've had to thin out the rest of them is just standard size uh polystyrene sheet but what we're going to do is we're going to put just a little bit of to me extra thin on here now don't use a lot i just need this to stick into place that's it and then since i've got that one done i'll snap it off <clears throat> and i need to cut that one off too There we go. And I've already glued this one. Yep. Yeah. So I can take that one off too. And as you can see, some, some of these are really thick. So I'm just going around and fix them. Now these three right here are three that 
that I put tape on uh, that I didn't have to shim. All the others have to be shimmed one way or the other. Now, why am I doing this? Well, because I intend to paint this in the colors instead of it being this multicolor right here. The, these engines were normally, um, well, they, they were normally metallic, okay? So the cylinders weren't black. And if I have a large gap there and I paint this, uh, you know, silver, metallic, gray, or graphite or something like that, then those gaps will be visible. So, and I don't want those gaps visible on, on my model. So, so I am putting those little shims in there and we're going to file them down like I've done on, on these others. So we're going to let that dry a little bit and then we'll come back and trim those down. So trimming these down is fairly simple. Uh, we just use the rounded cap that's on the end of those push rods as our guide. And then you just use your uh, sprue cutters and just cut them off. Uh, not really flush, but close to flush because you still want, we, we kind of want to match that circumference up, uh, that circular uh, look there at the top of the push rod. So we can just sand it down. Uh, nice and even with it. And since this polystyrene stock card is softer, it's really soft polystyrene compared to the uh, uh, the plastic of the model, then we don't have to worry about, you know, changing the shape. Not that that's going to matter a lot, but <laughs> changing, the, changing the shape of the actual pushrod tubes. So there we go. Uh, we're all shimmed out now. We're ready to uh, to move on. So this is our uh, supercharger housing. I almost called it a turbocharger, but it's a supercharger housing with the accessory drive plate on the back. And we're going to go ahead and attach uh, these little components. Now the one in the center there is called a starter. There is no positive uh, location point for that. You just kind of stick it in there and, and make it center. And then we put our tachometer slash governor on and the little piece that goes on with it as well and I'm sure there's supposed to be a fuel pump back here somewhere uh, to feed the carburetor but I don't know I, I don't know which is which so uh, anyway we'll just put these on according to the instructions they they look good stacked up there this is our magneto so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put it into place too. Now you can glue all these uh, items on the, onto the back plate like I'm doing. And I will just brush uh, paint these later. I've decided that that's the route I'm going to go. Or you could just uh, paint them all individually if you want them painted. And uh, uh, put them on afterwards. Uh, or you could just leave it in the uh, colors of the, uh, the plastic. It's entirely up to you. We're going to paint this one. Uh, so, yep, that's a nice little assembly. It looks good. And we can just paint that all as one and then put it on uh, after we're done uh, painting. That'll make it easier for us to reach certain items. So I'm going to go ahead and glue up our push rods here. So I'm, I'm using the thick Tamiya cement for that. And we'll just line it up. And with all those little spacers on the end of our push rod tubes, that'll ensure that we don't have any unsightly gaps because of uh, um, uh, the, the way they made the part. Uh, it's just just kind of short there. So I, I know why they made it that way, I guess, because uh, if you're going to have kids put this thing together. But I think the uh, instructions are just terribly wrong on that. So now when it comes to our cut off propeller section here, you can see that each one of the alignment pins and holes are in a different position. Now the instructions don't point this out to us, but uh, it would become painfully obvious if you try to put this thing together. So you just need to match up and make sure that you get them clocked just right so that they all line up. Not hard to do. So when we go to glue this up, uh, just clamping the ends of it there where the alignment pins are is uh, the best way I've found to go about it. 
It's going to be just some slight offset at the center hub, uh, but it's not really noticeable except on one little bolt uh, area there that uh, we're going to file up anyway. So we do have one little gap there, and that's not a big deal. We'll just put an extra clamp on it, and uh, yeah, that'll be fine. And then we'll uh, use our Tamiya Extra Thin here and let it do its thing. Now, after I get this thing glued up and it dries and everything, we'll come back and, and sand these seams down, you know, and then fill any sink marks or anything. It's in there uh, with some uh, uh, Mr. Surfacer 500 because they're pretty shallow. It's not a big deal. Moving on to our stand. Now, these end pieces on the stand are keyed, as you can see there. And there is no way to get the left on the right or the right on the left or to get it on backwards or to have your, your rotating pins pointed inward. There's just no way. It, it'll only go uh, one way. That's it. So uh, you can't mix them up. Now I'm going to use some, uh, uh, some more of the thick cement there because it's nice and gooey and tacky. <laughs> and... Uh, We'll just line the part up. Now, the big thing here is when you put these ends on, uh, you do want to make sure that they are square uh, because they can lean in a little bit, so you just check them. I'm just using this uh, semi-wide metal ruler here, six-inch ruler, to do that. And then we'll just do the same thing with the, with the opposite side. And do make sure that these things are square. That way it'll look good once you get it assembled. Or at least we hope it looks good when we get it assembled. <laughs> now all we have to do is uh, glue these A-frames on the end of our base frame. Now these are, they're keyed as well. There's two pins on one side and then a single pin on the opposite side. So uh, unless you cut those pins off, you, you're not going to get it wrong. So uh, we're just going to, Put some uh, adhesive on there, some cement, and uh, we're gonna clamp it, uh, clamp it into into place. <laughs> we get our get our clamps to stick. This this uh, polystyrene that they're using is kind of soft and flexible, and it's also really slick, which I hope it doesn't translate into painting issues. But uh, I guess we'll find out when we get ready to paint this thing. So we just clamp it up together, and then we can go ahead and do the opposite side. And since this is pretty much a, a mirror image, identical more or less, left and right, uh, well, not really identical, but there is a left and right, uh, we're just going to clamp these up too. That way they'll stay in place while they dry. So when it comes to putting our center rotating section into our A-frame uh, rolling mount here, uh, as you can see, the plastic is very, very pliable and... and uh, uh, well, I shouldn't say pliable, but bendable. So we can just spread this apart and stick it in there. Now the instructions want you to leave one of those A-frame ends off uh, and then put that in, in place. Uh, we didn't do that. <laughs> and then we have our plate, our, our data plate to put on, and name plate. And then we've got all of our wheels and caster and axle assemblies and stuff, and which we're going to paint all that up separately. So we're going to uh, leave those off for now. So there we are. This is the build. This is all of the major assemblies that I intend to paint separately. Okay, so <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah. <laughs> I really don't think that these engineers really thought this kit through very well. Uh, that's just my take. I mean, we're talking about engineering uh, that's very reminiscent of the late 1970s and the mid-1980s kind of thrown together. Um, and then their instructions, well, as I showed you, uh, there's no way to get these cylinders uh, all lined up correctly uh, unless you use this, uh, we're going to call it the intake manifold with the intake pipes on it in place in order to take care of that alignment. Otherwise, you're just going to have cylinders leaning everywhere. <laughs> That's not going to be good. 
that's the big thing. Uh, and then the other thing is the sanding and the fixing of all these little seams on these two two piece parts that go together. So, I mean, really, the, I mean, the cylinders go together pretty good, except that I, I did go in and do a little bit of sanding uh, on the uh, twin valve covers there on each one of them just to clean that all up because we are going to be painting it, So, which will be in the next video. But now, to mention it, Atlantis says that this is a skill level two kit. All right, and if we look on the back here, and I, I didn't cover this, I, I didn't even see this on the back uh, when I did the kit review, which that's my bad, sorry about that. But skill level two was meant for 12 year olds and older. So uh, if you come down here also, it says, uh, recommended for modelers and hobbyists with adult supervision. So, <laughs> um, if you're thinking about buying this kit for a 12-year-old uh, and you're going to help them with it, don't be surprised that after 15 or 20 minutes, they're back to playing their video games and you're stuck with it stretched out all over the dining room table. And it's going to wind up being your kit. So, <laughs> something to keep in mind if you're thinking about that uh, this holiday season or even for birthdays or anything. So, I really don't think that this is a kit for young people. So, that's, that's my input right there. So, a uh, special thanks to... Uh, all of my subscribers because of you guys i keep making these videos and i hope you enjoyed this one uh also uh if you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber i hope that i earned your subscription today so you guys uh stay safe and i'll see you in the next one